six, five, four, three, two, one. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another CoStar FanCast brought to you by the NBPA. I'm your host, Patrick Green, and today we've got a very special guest. Last season, he averaged 19 points, seven rebounds, and three assists. Let's give a big CoStar welcome to Philadelphia 76er star forward, Tobias Harris. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? What's up, Tobias? Um, so we've got a bunch of fans eager to ask you a question, but I had one to start us off. Everyone talked about what they missed when they were inside the bubble. What do you miss about the bubble? Oh, man. I mean, the bubble was a crazy experience. Um, what I miss, I would say there was – at our hotel, like our campus, we had a really um, good restaurant breakfast. It was called Narcuzzi. So the eggs there were really good. They had like a multi-grain croissant that was really good that I had like pretty much every game day breakfast. Um, so, yeah, like that would be the one thing I would say I miss is, is the breakfast at, in the bubble. And what was the first thing you did when you got outside, when you were, when you were free? When I was free, first thing I did was uh, just took a nap on my bed. I mean, that was like, you know, my bed was something I missed for so long. Um, so as soon as I got free, I just was just went home, took a nap, and just enjoyed being in my in my home in my house. And you've been busy since you got out. Um, you know, the off season started, but you uh, got a chance to meet Kamala Harris last week. Yeah. Um, so. We did a round table myself, CJ McCollum, Donovan Mitchell, and um, Kamala Harris. And it was just an amazing experience um, being able to sit down and talk, just gain a perspective of where herself and uh, VP Biden, Joe Biden are coming from, and just just understanding and gain knowledge in, in that time. Uh, I thought it was an amazing production. I you know CJ McCollum's, his new series, on Players TV, and he's doing an amazing job with it. So just to be a part of it, I was really excited for and um, wasn't going to turn down the opportunity. It's great to hear. All right, let's go to our questions. First up, we got Isaiah. Isaiah, where are you calling in from? Uh, New Jersey. Yeah. What's up, Isaiah? Yeah. What question? What's going on, Tobias? I know you're in the books. So what are some good books you read this year in the bubble? Oh, man. So I'm actually, you know, in the bubble, I came to the bubble with like uh, like 10 books. And I was like, I'm going to read all these books in the bubble. Like, let me just be in my room and read all these books. I ended up only reading maybe like one of them. And the reason why is because we were spending so much time like with our teammates, uh, with my teammates after the games, after practice, we were just finding out things to do to be out of the hotel room. Um, but then after the bubble ended, so now I'm in like the process of reading. I'm reading this book now called Flow. And I just finished um, the book right up there. It's uh, what does it say? something about a superior man. Um, I have to get that. Oh, I can't, I can't see it fully, but I just finished that one. And um that was an amazing book that I read just about life, relationships, being a better man all around. And now I'm in the process of reading a book called Flow that I'm really enjoying just about our consciousness, about things we can do to really put us in a, in a great state each and every day and, you know, fulfill our happiness. So always reading, always got a book in hand. You know, I was just talking to my younger brother the other day. He's telling me he's reading like three books in in three weeks. So that kind of motivated me to get on my game too. So I think it's super important. I love it. Isaiah, any book recs for Tobias? Uh, I'm going to take his advice. I got to get into reading myself. I got to get more in tune and catch up to him. You got to you can start anytime. Just get on and whenever. Definitely, definitely. Great question, Isaiah. All right, next up, we got Rav Deep. Rav Deep, where are you calling in from? Jersey. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. 
What is your favorite bubble memory? Ah, uh, so many of them. Um, favorite bubble memory, I would say, is uh, when probably when myself, Kyle O'Quinn, and Matisse got in the boat and we were driving off in the boat, just like <laughs> died on us in the middle of the lake. And um, it was just a, it was an experience. And I thought it was really funny because we kind of, I felt like before we got on the boat, we were kind of arguing of who should drive the boat. And then, you know, Kyle obviously just bullied his way into the front seat to to be able to drive the boat and it just breaks down on him. So that that was probably my my funniest bubble bubble memory. Yeah, that must be fun. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> Thank, thanks for your question, Rob Deep. Next up we got Anna Paula. Anna Paula, where are you calling in from? Hi, um, I'm going from Mexico, actually. Hey, how are you? Hi, again. Good, and you? I'm doing well. Um, for you, what was the best part of Matt's blogs that he uploaded on YouTube? Oh, best part of his vlogs, um, I think after his first vlog, and then he continued to put them out. We started to see Matisse, like in the mornings, become really moody. And um, it was because he was spending so much time like editing and doing all the vlogs. So we used to be, we used to like just be joking with him, like, "Bro, you gotta, you gotta stop with the vlogs because you're not getting enough sleep." And it was just a funny experience. But he was, um, he was so passionate about it. And as you could see, like how amazing his vlogs were each and every time he was doing all this work by himself, which really was the, the most amazing part about it. And it was just funny to see how much time and effort he was putting into this video editing. It was everywhere you go, he had the camera or he had his laptop where he was editing and, and putting a vlog together. And he has so much more footage that isn't out there yet that I think is even even funnier than some of the scenes he has. Anna, what was your yeah, favorite was part of Matisse's me. vlog? What was your favorite part of Matisse's uh, vlog? I mean, I don't know, like, to see what it was like to be, like, inside the bubble, you know? Yeah, I think everybody kind of resonated with that. He was giving literally everybody the inside pass on, on life in the bubble. And it, it was awesome. I, everybody was... Really excited to see that see his his work. Great question, Anna. All right, next up we have Jay. Jay, where are you calling in from? I think he's on mute. Oh. Jay, where are you calling yeah. in from? You're on with Tobias. I'm in uh, San Antonio. Hey, right, what's up, Jay? How you doing? Hey, I just want you to know I picked a good shirt for you to wear today. So, hey, you picked a uh, great shirt. I keep you in my That's mind, great right? Shirt. Uh, you got to represent, so you know. Um, so I have like a management, like team, like leader type of question. Mm -hmm. So from the preseason to the regular season to when we never knew if there was going to be a, like the rest of the season going to be finished, the bubble. Did you notice, like, as a team leader, like a change in team chemistry or, like, goals y'all had throughout the year that you may have not had at the beginning of the year? Oh, I think uh, not necessarily. I think when we when you go into any season, you're trying to do whatever you can to win the most amount of games and put yourself in a position to get to the playoffs and to hopefully win a championship. I think any winning team and winning players have that type of mindset. So I guess, you know, when we started the season, that was definitely our goal. Obviously, through the year, you go through ups and downs. Then to have a season stop, not knowing what was next, not knowing if you're even going to play again. Um, obviously, there's that type of mental psyche that's on you. But once we got in the bubble, you know, it was a goal of ours to do whatever we can to win as many games as we can and put ourselves in that position. We didn't get there, but... It's just fuel to the fire to what's next, the future, next season, and hopefully coming back, being better and um, improving. So that's always like 
there's always a long-term picture on things and you got to keep that in perspective whenever you're playing in this league and you got to be able to just improve and that's the biggest thing in this game thanks Tobias thank you Tobias do you have any do you have any leadership tips for people like you know just Jay and all of this yeah I mean um you know one thing I would say is in everything you have to lead by example so you know, you're not going to have that much equity or, or that much say if you're not doing what you what you actually want other people to do. So me personally, I try to lead by example just with my work ethic and how I approach each and every day, being as positive as, as I can, uplifting teammates, uplifting staff, everyone who's around, and, and look, at, look at the bright side of everything. So I've always been that way. And one thing I know is, you know, if you put the work in and you have that type of equity, and that credibility from other guys, you know, you'll see it in the long run. Some great insight. Thank you. Um, next up, we got Marvin. Marvin, where are you calling in from? It's Marvy. Marvy, how you doing? Marvy, oh, hi, Marvy. I'm how are you? Sorry about that. It's Marvin. It's like a Marvin with an E at the end, but it's fine. Marvin. <laughs> yeah, Marvin, I'm calling Marvin, in from from Ottawa, Canada. Very cool. Nice. And my question is, is the Toby and Bobby show ever coming back? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, I will say it is coming back. We we had plans to do the Bobby and Toby show, like, I, I want to say this summer, but actually like last summer that just passed us. Um, but the pandemic happened and everything <gasps> else. But... Oh wow, look at Bobby. What's up, guys? <laughs> wow, look at Bobby. Hey What's Bobby, up? you wanted to know, is the Toby and Bobby show coming back? Bobby Toby Show and come back, you know. Uh, we working on that, working in progress. But I You're hope so they will come back. Uh, look, the boss is right now here and we talk with him right now in this moment. Like online in front of everybody. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the vice car is from uh, New York. New York, okay. Cup. Hello, yeah, Island. from New York. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, uh, the boss of Bobby and Toby show, and uh, you continue, please take it. <laughs> I think <laughs> well, we, we we're, we're gonna work on it, but you know, as as everyone knows, it's my friend Bobby, but you know, he kind of trying to replace me with some other people. I'm not even gonna say their names. Luca. We don't even need to say the names, but it's, but Bobby and Toby show will come back. Hey, don't uh, don't show jealous. Don't be jealous here right now. Hey, it's, it's it's everything about other people, not just about you and me right now. We, we try we try to make these people like uh, with uh, our friend relationship. We talk after from the, behind the camera. Now we need to talk with uh, with nice people who is like who watching you and me. How like uh, how we smart? You smart? I'm stupid. Like you know, like dumb and dumb. No, but, you, you know, no, he's no, like he's like smart, smart and dumb. Huh? You you're the smart one. You're the brains. Oh, if I, hey, you know why Bobby and Toby show is not here right now? Because I'm the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin, what was your favorite part about the show? Um, when Bobby was sad because he couldn't get shoes to fit his his giant feet. Uh, why? Why you remind me of that? I was I was just, <laughs> just like crying like six months it's ago. Okay, he got to ice like, cream. He got to ice yeah. cream. Exactly, I did get ice cream. You want to know a funny okay. story? Yeah, but look, he left those shoes in my house in LA, and then I got traded with him. So like all my stuff got shipped. So I still shoes, have his shoes me. I still have his shoes, Soul Cycle shoes. I still have them. I you you're supposed so to give me back some episode. I know. Yeah, I, I, I will give that, you this is the good. Don't tell nobody, guys. This is next episode. How he backed my shoes to me, and I was like, I was exciting again. For the same shoes, how we going in South Africa? <laughs> exactly. But because of Corona, everybody need to wear a mask and six feet apart, and only be like three people there. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> did you guys bus, run into each other uh, in the bubble? Oh, did we? We yeah. We, yeah, we were always. I always saw Bobby at you know back. We were in the same like campus in the bubble, so. I think it was a big thing. Like everybody, when they would see us, they'd be like, oh, they go Bobby and Toby. Oh, there they go. It was always something like just laughing or they'd say, oh, look at you guys back together. So it was cool. 
Yeah, it was amazing. Every time when I see Tobias, yeah. I might balcon. I might like uh, balcon watch like on the place because they go to eat on that way. I saw Tobias every single time. Hey, Toby. To yelling, but yeah. he was like, okay, yeah, uh, you can go out with Luca. We're not friends anymore. No, of course not. I see him every time. If I don't want to see him, I need to, I like, I see him and he make my day better every single time when I saw him. I was like, yeah, Toby's back. That's a real best friend right there. So, Marvin, would there be, would there be anything you'd want to see if the, in the new episodes? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Um, they should play one on one now that they're not on the same team. Wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. About like, hey, we, we already play <laughs> one on one, but this is behind oh, the camera. Right, hey, yeah. hey uh, I don't want to say who win who lost. Uh, you, you can ask the bias, but you know, like, hey, uh, I, I don't want to say who won, who lost uh, full court one on one, but you know, I was ready and uh, I played good, but you guys decided who won. We can, Marvin, you can tell us who won. You can, you can take no, it. No, 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 no. It's, it's about, it's right. about like that. on the show and we'll they, be the judge guests. of that. <laughs> you know, 50 we'll 50, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, Marvin. Great questions. Thank you. All right, next up, we got Thank Carmelo. You. Carmelo, you're on with Tobias Carmel and Boban. Carmelo, Anthony. Hello. Hey, what's uh, going on? How's your day, Tobias? How's your day, Tobias? I'm good. I'm good. How about yourself? He, I'm he, good. He asked you how are you. He said, how is your day? I said it was good. Oh. Sorry, my bad. It was good. It got better when Boban come on, came on the video. This is the good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, my question is, what made you love the game, meaning basketball? Do you play it for fun or for a reason? Yeah, uh, you know, as a kid playing, I always played the game for fun. Uh, once I started to really see myself develop and get better, that was when I was like, man, I, I love playing basketball. I love working out. I love, you know, going out there and competing and playing well. And the older I got, the more I realized how much I wanted to continue to improve for myself, uh, for my family, friends, and for a lot of people that I believe, you know, weren't quote unquote, like supposed to make it like weren't supposed to be as good as people may have told them you're not making it to the NBA. So that was always added motivation for me. And, um, that was, that's like my why of, of, of where I'm at besides my family and and um, in my progression as a player. So, yeah. What about you, Boban? Yes. Uh, Boban, when I list Tobias, I was like it's the same the same impact, like everything what, what he said, like, yeah, I agree with like, I agree like 80%, of course, like we everybody, uh, I'm coming from, uh, coming from Europe where, like, where it's like different when you become professional. And you become professional with 18. If you like there, if you if you become you have 18, if you don't sign for a professional team, you will not play basketball anymore. You need, you need to find like to do something else. And this is like this is like the reason because I was tall and uh, you know I still like working on this and everything like uh, everything was going like uh, that direction. I want to be one time like NBA player. And uh, of course you have every time ups and down. Of I didn't draft it and I work I work hard to get where I am right now. Of course, meet a lot of fans, be with you, be in front of you guys. And of course, meet my brother, my best buddy, Tobias. And uh, I'm so thankful and grateful. This like this hard work make me not just to be a basketball player, like to meet like my best friend. Got some great answers, Carmelo. Carmelo, uh, is that you. your brother behind you? Your brother's behind yeah, you? Who you got with uh, you, Carmelo? Yeah, I got two, two brothers with me. Yo, I, 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 I was on Trey Young's fan cast. Oh. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I think he's on top hey, of his brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm his twin brother. Oh, you and, guys uh, are twins. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I was also on uh, Trey Young's uh, fan cast, too. That's why. He came. Oh, cool, that's why. Cool. He was just trying to. <laughs> Very cool, guys. Okay. Uh, All right, next up, we got Ujala. Yeah. Ujala, where are you calling in from? In from Edmonton, Canada. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Um, so I have two questions, if that's okay. One of them is a pretty quick one. Um, so if you were a food, what food would you be? 
Oh, you know what? Hey, this is, I think this is a question for Boban to answer for me. Boban, <laughs> what food would I be? I know what, what I would be. He would be broccoli for sure. Oh. Broccoli? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because, you know why? Because here, every time it's healthy, every time like uh, every, every going something, like for me, broccoli is the most healthy thing. Like if you eat broccoli, like you're healthy. If you don't eat broccoli, you're not healthy yeah. anymore. And uh, my friend, my friend love uh, like healthy food and broccoli. It's my symbol for healthy food. Like if you eat broccoli, like and he, of course, he is not like guy who eat everyday broccoli, but you know, he's the guy who eat healthy. And broccoli make me like, oh wow! If I want to eat healthy, uh, okay, broccoli. And this is the only word on English what I understand. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of people don't like broccoli, so I don't know if you'd want to be a food that everybody, like a lot of people, don't like. Yeah, it's good because nobody wants to eat. Okay. Yeah, so I guess. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling. I would say broccoli, sure. avocado. Avocado. Uh, one time in uh, Toronto, I took Boban to a healthy restaurant. It was vegan, super clean, super healthy, and mm -hmm. like he was like so upset when he's like, he's like eating this vegan burger and looks over and goes, "Come on, brother, I can't eat this, I cannot eat this," and I was like, "It tastes the exact same." He's like, "No, <laughs> I, I go eat somewhere else," and I said, "Dang," but if Boban was a food, Boban would be a soup because that's all he orders just soup, soup soup any restaurant he orders soup like that's his favorite soup is pretty good though so Super i get good. it yeah. <laughs> they melted everything you know when, when we when we was in la and i asked about like soup and they was like they look at me like weird no man it's so hot here we don't have soup i was like okay so i, <laughs> I feel like i asked something wrong question i was like guys have soup uh no we don't have soup i was like Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, and then okay, my question. second question, if that's okay. Go ahead. All right. Um, so uh, I did watch your appearances in Matisse's vlogs, um, your sit down with Senator Harris, and then just your overall interviews in general. And I feel like it helped me learn a lot in terms of the social unrest that's going on in the States, just from a different lens, um, as opposed to the one that I'm looking from. Um, and my question for you is basically, what's one thing you want the NBA audience to learn from you when everything is said and done? Uh, that's a great question. And um, thank you, because, you know, that's what using the platform is for, have people encourage people to look in to see what we're talking about, what's going on in different communities and different uh, places in the world. So for me, what, you know, my biggest thing is just bringing attention to some of the social injustices that are going on in the world, um, highlighting what's truly happening in African-American communities, what's happening to African-American people, um, and being a, a person to bring awareness to that. And, you know, I think one of the greatest things that I can truly give and have people understand is, look, I have family members and teammates that have family members that live a different life that go through those things. And just because we're athletes and we're playing on TV and making a salary doesn't mean that that doesn't directly affect us and our loved ones. So it's mm -hmm. being able to have that type of um, humility to understand that and to also bring awareness to it and to let people know like, hey, these things are going on and we should care about them the same way that a lot of fans care about everything else that is going on in the sports world. And we should be allowed to talk freely about that and to not be, you know, looked down upon if we're bringing awareness to that. So that's what I, my my thing is. All right. Thank you so much for answering the question. I appreciate it. Thank you. No Tobias wrote a great piece in the Players' Tribune. You should check that out too. Yeah. I did. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate right. that. No problem. Next up, we got Ryan. Ryan, where are you calling in from? How we doing? I'm calling from uh, Lehigh University. Actually, CJ McCollum, you mentioned him before. He is, uh, he's an alum of, of here. But, uh, yeah, here in PA. I'm just about an hour north of Philly, actually. So, very yeah, cool. Come, How come you doing today? <laughs> I, yo, please, I, sign me up any day. Um, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I'm in Philly right now. 
How am I feeling? I'm I'm all right. I, it's a little stressful okay. school right now, but this has absolutely been the highlight of probably my year. This is incredible. I've I'll tell you what, I was on the Trey Young fan cast and it was such a surreal experience. And the fact that I got another opportunity is, 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 is it's an honor. And so to talk to you guys too, I mean, I am such a fan of both of you. You're so entertaining. You're so, it, not even on the floor, but I'm talking even off the floor. Oh, on the floor you are too. Sorry, that came out terribly. But off the floor too, I'm saying that you guys are just, you bring such a fun aspect to basketball. And it's something that I really wish more people took advantage of you know sometimes the game gets so competitive and and you guys just make it so much l l more lighthearted, and i really appreciate that now um i do have a question and so you guys obviously were teammates i think three different teams correct yeah yes. three. okay were you guys contacted in the same manner when you were traded together was that purposely done because of your friendship or was this something that was completely a coincidence now if it's you know some contract stuff you don't can't really talk about then I get it. But if there's something you could share, if that's just a complete coincidence, or do they know that you guys really wanted to stay together? Bobby, you got it, I got it. Uh, I, I got the first part, you get the second part. I, I, so, I didn't hear the second one, by the way. I don't know, mind. Okay, you got uh, the first one. So it was, uh, it was a coincidence just that we were in the same trade together. I think contract-wise and what happened, uh, salary-wise, they both aligned. And um, it was funny because I got called to, you know, Doc called me and I went to his room and he said, hey, you know, we're trading you to the 76ers. And then I was like, well, okay, like, is anybody else in the trade? And he was like, I can't, I can't tell you that. Mm -hmm. I can't say. And then I get, we're in Charlotte and I get like down. One time, one time, Charlotte. And then I see Boban. One time. Wait, what time is Charlotte? It's like 1, 1 a.m. 1 in the morning. Wow, so middle of the damn the elevator, And then I see Boban's Last door day of trade. And he starts walking in and I say, oh, you got traded. He goes, what? What do you mean? And I was like, <laughs> oh, you'll find out soon. He's like, oh, I'm going to Doc's room. I guess I did get traded. I was like, oh. <laughs> but I didn't even know we were in the same trade. I was just like, Dang, they, they traded Boban somewhere too, and then he came back. He says, I'm, I'm going to Philly. Going That's to awesome that you guys were traded together. I mean, is it like, like it, from a perspective of being traded, is it like getting easier every time it happens, or is it really just a hard process? I mean, for you, your family, like, how does that, how does it work? The the, the first time, okay, I, I will take from this story, Tobias. I will, because yeah. uh, it, uh, the uh, first time when Tobias get traded to from uh, from Orlando to Detroit, I was like, for me, like when I get and we to get after that, we get together trade from Detroit to LA Clippers, and this for me yeah. everything like new experience. Like you need to pack your stuff immediately, like after like 12 hours, you need to be in a plane ready to go in another city, like with your bags. Uh, Tobias already know situation. I was like, stick with Tobias and follow him. Where he go, Bobans go. I was like, I was like with him, like in his tail and <laughs> like, uh, and uh, but uh, it was. It was like uh, it was difficult first day, and after that it was super easy. Like the boys explained me like how that work, how is everything. Uh, like you don't need to worry about anything. And the second the second trade when we go to Philly, it was like it was like easy. Okay, we were, I already packed my my suitcase and everything. We already we already ready to go somewhere, and this is how this is how we do so far. And I'm sure it made it easier by you two being such close friends. You know, like not all. I mean, most NBA players are not given that opportunity, you know, traded just randomly out of the blue. They're alone, and you guys had each other, so that's pretty sick. You know, how'd you guys yeah. meet? Like, obviously, you were, you know, teammates, but, like, is there some way that you guys just started, like, bonding so well? Like, how did that happen? Like, uh, Yeah, well, one, one question. Uh, sorry, the bias, one more. We, we, we play pickup in Detroit, and, uh, like, he was he was super selfish, and he didn't want to pass the ball. And I was like, we was in locker room, and I was like, I was like, Tobias, I don't like you. And he was like, <laughs> and he looked at me, I was like, are you serious? <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> and I'm like, 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 first day meeting this guy. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I thought everybody said this is a nice guy. <laughs> I'm just, oh I'm just honest. I'm just honest. And after that, we start like, honest. we start hanging around like uh, every day. We start like, you know, like, like talk. We start like, you know, like the same team, of course. And uh, it was getting better and better. And every time like when I, somebody like when I, when I hear like 
bad thoughts about somebody, like I changed that super fast because I know right. he's an amazing guy. And, uh, it's just like just his day. I mean, you know, you're also you're you're so nice that you're probably afraid to say anything to the coach. But you know, your per thirty six minutes is insane when you're out there. To, Tobias, you should have spoken up, said, "Coach, put this man in more." He was average. I think it was like twenty, 20 or something, like some crazy stats. What's yeah, the reason they're crazy. not giving you the minutes? But Why are they playing I'm... you the whole game? You know, I more like to enjoy to watch my my friend Tobias from the bench enjoying his moves I, and, I respect uh, that. and and make him uh and make him I hope so next year <laughs> all star player because he's you're a fantastic player. teammate and a player absolutely both of you are really it's 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 amazing to watch. Thank appreciate you, thank you, my you man. Thank, thank you, you question, man. Really. Thank you. I all appreciate right, you guys, up, man. Next up, we got Isaiah. Isaiah, where are you calling in from? Isaiah D. You... Yup, that's me. I'm from Harleysville, PA. Hey, what's going on, Isaiah? What's going on? What's your question, Isaiah? Yeah. All right, so what? who did you look up to when you were a kid in the NBA, like both of you guys? For me, it was uh, Michael Jordan. That was, like, my idol. Watch him so much uh you know he's the greatest to play the game uh so being able to watch him as a kid highlights all the way through high school um yeah i think anybody in my age range idol is my yeah how about you bobon i like you know like the the three guys when i watch it's like yao ming uh hakim olajuwon and of course, Tim Duncan. Like this is like this, like the three guys, and uh, when I like yeah. start to follow everything, like I want to be like, you know, everybody here like something amazing. What I want to store it and be one, like one of them. Never mind. Take one, give me one. I will take all three together. It's like it's amazing, and this is like I have opportunity to uh, to play against Yao Ming, and uh, we play we play in China. I get that opportunity to. To meet him or Joan when we play with the uh, with the Spurs yeah. against Houston, and I had that opportunity to play in the same team with Tim Duncan. Like this is like, and I I love them. Science That's science amazing. Science. Yeah, and it was it was cool when I when I make that mission. I was like, wow. Yeah, but yeah. thank you. Great, great question. I love it. And this great is great question, Isaiah. I had thank a question you. for you guys. What's something about each other that they, you guys don't share on Instagram? Maybe you can answer for each person. What's something about that other person that, that maybe people don't know? The... I don't, um, I, I, okay, I'll, you, you, okay, you Tobias, take a I would say that anytime something on the internet comes out about Bobby and Luca, he always texts me to check on me. I think it's very funny though, because there'll be like a post will come out and everybody will comment, hey, we need to check on Tobias here. And like, I'll just randomly get a text from Bobby, like, hey, brother, you good? Or he'll call me. And I just think that it's so funny every time. So I think that's something that a lot of people don't know. <laughs> Shows how you good know, it's but the, the, Yeah, but this is, this is the question. Like, when, we, when something come out like that on Instagram, I've, I never plan to do that because every time, from uh, every time that video is from somebody else, like Tobias took it, somebody else took it on the side. How we do yeah. this? Like I, w- I will never post something like that. How like how like what you guys watch now on Instagram, Bobby Toby show. I will be like more like uh, okay, is I'm I try to be a serious guy, but I am not. Like I'm a goofy guy. I try to joke around every single time. Try to like you know I'm every time try to have positive energy and, uh, and smile on my face. Of course, you guys see that. But me personal, I will never post that on Instagram. Uh, if you guys like, if somebody other person didn't take already that video and it's already already everywhere. <laughs> and this this is mostly the, my friend Tobias. Like he's the guy who like who make me who make me to uh, to other people look like what kind of person I am really. Yeah, I mean, for lack of better words, I made Boban famous. Uh, no, I make my <laughs> hey, ma. <laughs> No. Boban, what's something about no. Tobias that no that no one knows about that you that you know about that you want to share? You know, uh, look, uh, what I know about Tobias, I don't want, I don't want to speak with nobody because my friend will get mad super fast. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I joke. He's he's sometimes 
the only thing what he do, I don't know guys know, but he sleep in 10 o'clock. He need to go and sleep in 10 because after that, he will like not feel good how he say. But I think this he's lying his head. He need to wake up early, eat the right time, a lunch, eat the right time, uh, dinner, breakfast, uh, snacks, uh, read the, hey, what you guys didn't know, he read the same book like all year. No, it's joking. <laughs> 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 no, no, That's he don't crazy, read. Bro. He, every, he every time different, but every time when he come on the game, he come with some other book and every time in the same page, every single time. I was like, man, you read like same page every time, like different, different book. And this is like, this is like the bias. Oh man, that's crazy. Great guys. All right. All right. Next up we got Ruben. Ruben, where are you calling in from? Uh, my question is, oh, you know, my question is, are you happy that you're going to work with Doc Rivers again? Oh yeah, I am. Um, you know, Doc coached me in LA for my time when I was there. He's a great coach, players coach, um, you know, has a great system and I'm excited because I feel, you know, what we needed was, um, somebody to come in and really he has, uh, the experience and I think with our personnel, it's going to fit well with his style of play and just him as a person too, I think is going to be great for our group. So, I'm excited to be coached by Doc again. Uh, obviously, things happen really fast for him. Mm -hmm. So whenever the season gets going back up, it's going to be an awesome time. And I think the sky's the limit for our group. We just got to figure it out and get it together. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, I also have a second, qu uh, if, second question, if you don't mind. Are you going to go back to the headband style that you always used to do? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I mean, you know, I grew the hair out and my girl likes it. So I think I might keep it. That, like, I tried putting the headband over to see how it looked. And it didn't look too good. So, uh, you know, unless I cut my hair, then I think I... And, I, and shave, I and shave too. It. Shave too. Mobon told me the other day, he uh. said, hey, you need to shave. Your beard doesn't look good. <laughs> Boban, should he go back to the headband right. or keep the hair? Uh, headband and uh, cut the face hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and Ruben, what what jersey are you wearing? I see you're wearing a Joel Sixers jersey. Yeah, you got yeah, a I'm sorry. Jersey. I'm yeah, sorry, Tobias. I didn't get one. Hey, it's all good. Hey, as yeah. long as you're repping the yeah. team, that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. I'll get one. Don't worry. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Is anybody All right, next. Hey, I, I, I saw, oh, I saw sorry. you have, a, you have, a, you have headphones for, uh, for, uh, for a gaming. What kind, what kind of game yeah. you play? Uh, you know, I mostly play like, you know, uh, what do I usually play? I usually like playing, you know, maybe. Counter uh, Strike. Counter Strike. Counter Strike. Yeah. Counter Strike, okay. Valorant, or you know, really got into this one game called um, Warzone. Warzone's pretty fun. I like Ooh. playing that. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Well, he's a big Counter Strike guy, and he's yeah, not that good. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks yeah. he's so good, though. He thinks he's so good. I'm professional. Who's, who's better at video games, Tobias or Boban? Oh, Boban. Boban, look, mm -hmm. Boban better at everything. Just know. <laughs> and when, when we were in LA, I, I don't, I never played Counter Strike in my life. He invites me with his friends. Hey, come to this place, play video games. I come there. I had probably the second highest score. I never played this game in my life. And you, Bobby, you know this. No, you, you, you was, you was lucky day. He was lucky day. Oh man, now it's a lot. It was one of, one of these days when he's when he scored forty five points and he was like, and he felt good. This like these days. Well, when I when I get the game, we'll find out who's who's oh, best. Okay. Nice, <laughs> guys, <laughs> uh, uh, guys, oh, deal. Guys, I, I will leave you to Tobias. I don't want to take his time with you guys anymore because you're here because of Tobias. I want to say thank you to everybody and uh, enjoy with my buddy Tobias. Tobias, thank you, my friend. Everybody. Hey, brother, thank you for coming. Bye, Boban. Let's give a round for Boban for coming Bye, in. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. That was sweet. See ya. Bye. All right. That was great. Oh, you didn't All leave right, me. Leave us alone, Bobby. <laughs>
I think All right, next know. up we got we got Sam. Sam, where are you calling in from? So um yeah, I believe I'm the world's biggest Tobias Harris fan. Uh I love it. Signed jersey, three signed pictures, signed basketball, two pictures with you, your Funko Pop. Wow. You know, all that. But um and I also have your Tennessee jersey. But um my question is, I know coming from Detroit to the to LA, Doc Rivers really helped your career sprout. Your numbers mm-hmm. went up insanely. And now coming back to Philly, you reunited with him. Do you think that your stats are going to take another lift off and it's going to be a huge jump for your career? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to it as a player. You know, it's for me, it's about winning. So whatever is needed for me on the team to help our team win is what I'm about. Uh, you know, in, t- in terms of stats wise, biggest thing that matter to me are like shooting percentages, helping the team, being a floor spacer, shooting the ball better from three. So I know in doc system, I'm going to have the opportunity to get different looks um, to get in a rhythm offensively too. So those are all things that I'm excited for and can't wait for. Um, so it, you know, obviously season looks like it's going to be right around the corner. So I got to continue to work and get better. That's one thing I always do is evaluate my game and, how I can improve. So this is going to be a, a great year. I believe it. I'm putting the work in to have it happen. And um, yeah, you know, Sam, I appreciate you. You got, you know, I love it when I hear people say they're, they're big fans of myself. And it's one of the real reasons why I love playing this game is being able to bring inspiration. So I appreciate you. Thank you. And uh, actually you saw my Instagram story a bunch of times. They were followed, but Sorry, I forgive you. What's your ID? Tobias.culture. All right. I'll make sure I give you a follow. Tag you about 10 times a day. You'll see it. All right. I got you. (laughs) Also, I have one more question. Go ahead. I'm I'm really big with family first, and I love my family. And I know you have a lot of talent in your family with Tori, Terry, and Tyler. I see big things in their future. Do you think – how do you think – like you're helping with their basketball careers. Have you helped them a lot or has it been like, you know, back and forth, you guys just help each other with everything? Yeah, we we just really help each other with everything. Um, You know, I'm always going to be in their ear, making sure that they're working as hard as they can. But at the same time, you know, I want everybody, especially my younger brothers and my family in general, to be happy in whatever they're doing. And if that's finding your happiness playing wherever you're playing, just enjoy the game, you know, and that's advice I give for everybody and anything you do is enjoy what you do. You know, I, me personally, I truly love waking up and being able to work out and, and get myself better as a player, human, you know, as a man. So um, I always expect great things from family members and we all push each other, as I think all families should. Obviously, family gets into it at times, but it's all for the love of it. And, you know, we all love each other and want to see each other be successful. And I'm going to follow you. Tobias you. Culture. Yep. You and your brother remind me a lot of me and my brother. We're both athletes, super, super com- competitive and get into it a lot. Yeah. With sports will be playing a friendly pickup game. Next thing you know, we're having a fist fight, but... Yeah. yeah, maybe a lot of men him. So, <laughs> all right, man. Sam, Sam, what's your favorite piece of Tobias memorabilia you have? Probably this picture. Um, are you here? It's me, my grandma, and Tobias. Um, I remember I texted. It was super short notice. I knew him and Josh Richardson were going to be at the mall. At yeah, the mall, um, yeah. I t- I texted my grandmother. She knows how much I like you and she left work actually mid work came picked me up brought me and she was she was just like did not think she was going to enjoy it and then she saw me about to meet you she ran up um and everything I was going to tell you I just forgot I was like we were both really excited and um she loves that picture she always asked me about it she always asked me to send it to her so it's like fresh in her mind and that just that was one of the best days of my life. So that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. 
It was a pleasure. Sam, what, what's your favorite Tobias game? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, well, since I've been watching you since you were at West Hills, uh, my my mom knew and my whole family knew there. And when I took when you came to Philly, I was like, trust me, this is the guy. He's gonna he's the last piece that we need. Our team and when you showed up you were just hitting threes all over the place and that's when my mom told my mom was telling me like oh wow this guy's really good i like she knew she's a big sixers fan she saw the future and that's where i was like okay that was a good way to prove my point tobias just saved me that's probably my <laughs> that's awesome cool. man Ma- mom approved tobias i know right hey <laughs> Yeah. All right, next up, we got Kirsten. Kirsten, where are you calling in from? Kirsten. Kirsten, I'm sorry. Hey, Kirsten. It's okay. <laughs> um, I had two questions, if that's okay. Um, sure. I was wondering, what was your favorite game from, like, this previous season? I got to go to the Sixers-Lakers game when you guys beat the Lakers in Philly, and I had a great time. So I was wondering what your favorite was. Uh, well, honestly, that was probably my favorite game. That was when we played them at home. Um, it was like right, I want to say it was like right before a break or something. Like something, yeah, like I think it was right before All-Star break. But um, it was just a lot. It was a great energy in the building. And um, you know, anytime you get to play against LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Davis, it's a big, it's a big matchup. So that was probably... In my opinion, that was my favorite game. That and opening night are always like my favorites. My other question was, is what was your favorite high school and college basketball memory? Oh, wow. Um, high school, I would say, was the Long Island Championship. Um, it was us versus a team, uh, Longwood High School. And, you know, it was like sold out game. Everyone was there. Just energy was on another level for a high school game. Um, college, I think it was like my first college game. It's a preseason game, well, exhibition game, and um, I was like, "Wow! Like I'm actually here, like playing college basketball at a high major school." And it was just kind of surreal for me at first because I was like. Man, I like been dreaming about this. So here I am and that was a amazing experience at Tennessee. So, you know, I, I take in all these the, these experiences and never forget them. Great questions, Kirsten. So we're gonna go through all the callers right now and you're gonna describe Tobias in in one word. What's the one word that describes him as a player or a person? Isaiah G. Uh, smooth. You're just a smooth player. I love your game. I'm glad you're on the Sixers and look forward to this season. Appreciate you. Uh, Ryan B. Ryan? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we hear you now. I would go – I'd go with vibey. I feel like I'd really vibe out with you. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like you're a vibe. All right. Hey, that, hey, I like that. I like that. Next up, we got Jay. I'd say a leader and a hashtag VFL because only Tennessee people know what VFL means, but – he gets it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, Ruben. Fantastic. Cause you know, you are a good player. Appreciate that. Uh, Rob deep. Fun to be around. Thank you. I tried my best. Ujala?
Marvin? I'll say self selfless. Thank you. It's a great. It's a great. Ujala? <laughs> Marvin. Yep. Yep. Another another word? Selfless and what else? Oh, you get two. Um, <laughs> well, I could go on. He's awesome. I really appreciate what you do for the people. Not just like as a player, you're a philanthropist. You really care about the city, um, about the country. I love what you're doing with the whole Black Lives Matter movement and education. I could go on, but yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you. That's great. And Anna P? Um, I will go with kind. I don't know, like just talking with you, you seem like a really kind person. Thank you. Kirsten? I would say difference maker because you're definitely a difference maker on and off the court. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Great. And Sam? Um, going to have to go with inspirational. You know, I know you lost a very close friend, uh, and that's why you were number 12. I lost a lot of close friends at a young age, and I just want to do everything I can to carry on their name. So, Appreciate you, Sam. Any last word, Tobias, for your for the fans? Yeah, I, I just want to thank everybody being here with this. This has been amazing. Uh, everyone had great questions, and um, you know, it's it, it means a lot to be able to be here and communicate with, and just to really chop it up and have a a great conversation with great people. Uh, Boban came in, he sparked up the place, and. You know, was telling jokes, so that's that's how Boban does. But this has been extremely fun for me to be able to connect with some of the best fans, fans that appreciate myself. I appreciate all of you, um, and I look forward to continuing to connect. And obviously, you guys can follow me. We can always, you can always DM and message me. I can. I'll see if I can get back to you. It's, it's tough at times, but I always appreciate positive energy, and I always put that on my page, and um, it means a lot to do this. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart, and I hope everybody has a great night, and let's look forward to a great season coming up. That's great. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today's CoStar FanCast, brought to you by the NBPA. Thank you to all the fans who tuned in, especially the ones who asked the question. Shout out to Tobias and Bob for being so gracious with their time. I'm your host, Patrick Green. Stay tuned for the next CoStar FanCast on November 11th, when we welcome CJ McCollum. Until then, follow CoStar for the latest updates on your favorite stars. See you guys.